Your blood pressure medications are stopping you having heart attacks and strokes. However, as you are growing older, they will cause dizzy spells and falls. Stay with us to the end of this video where we'll give you five top tips on how to get the best out of your medicines without them killing you. Your doctor in the office will tell you what your blood pressure target should be. There are many targets out there, but overall many guidelines will tell that the blood pressure, your blood pressure should be around 140 over 90 or 130 over 80 and below if you have diabetes or kidney disease. However, the blood pressure targets should be personalized as well as many other medical targets like in diabetes for example. Why this is necessary to understand because if you are an individual for example with dementia uh, or any other memory concerns or you are having balance problems and you already have had a few falls your blood pressure target will be different to a blood pressure target of an individual who does not have these problems because if you have balance problems we need to keep that blood pressure on a higher side and your balance should and your blood pressure should be around the figure of maybe 150 over 90 or even higher so my first top tip today is remember the blood pressure is very individualized. You need to sit down with your doctor and discuss your blood pressure target rather than being guided by the blood pressure targets given by various government guidelines. These guidelines on blood pressure acknowledge that the blood pressure in patients over the age of 80 should be below 150 yeah. over 90. So the targets were even elevated mm. by the guidelines. Interestingly, mm. as a geriatrician, I appreciated that past most uh, from the NICE guidelines. Uh, they mentioned that in individuals living with frailty, mm. balance problems, falls, various degree of memory problems, the target should be individualized and based on the clinical judgment of the physician who is looking after you. Uh, yeah, so therefore be aware, as you say, about your targets you're actually aiming towards because other healthcare professionals may not know this. Uh, and I see this from other clinics and they're trying to kind of push patients into getting unrealistic expectations. And as you say, falls are a bit of a problem for that. I will give you an example of a patient I looked after last week. She's a lady in her late 80s. She's having recurrent falls. She's on a number of blood pressure medications and admitted, unfortunately, with a pelvic fracture. Mm. And now she's been in hospital for two weeks. We're uh, trying to control her pain. She's being discharged. I stopped all her blood pressure medications, every single one of uh, them. And I gave the primary care physician a target for this individual mm. patient who now has a fracture, poor balance, uh, quite a significant memory problem. Her target blood pressure is 160 over 90 to 180 over 90. Hmm. So uh, tip number two is to get to know the side effects, the common side effects of the medicines you're actually taking. Why is this important? It's, it's important that you actually understand that all medicines will give you some degree of side effect. A side effect is something which is an expected usually and actually increases with the dose uh, that you're getting so starting at a very very low dose of medicine of the dose of the tablet you're taking and slowly increasing will reduce the incidence of these side effects but just to be aware of some most common side effects we come across now i know eleanor you have talked about this in your previous post oh the my the biggest <laughs> biggest problem is the amlodipine which, yes. which is causing ankle swelling uh, a swelling of your feet and then you go and complain to your doctor about it and end up yeah. with another medication yeah. And again, that was part a water of, tablet. Yeah, that was part of our previous post we did on uh, prescribing cascade. So I'm going to actually share a link there to the prescribing cascade uh, kind of video, and just talks about the polypharmacy, the multiple effects of treating a side effect with yet another drug. So just mm. to get to know what your side effects are for that drug. The other common side effect we come across is a drug we call an ACE inhibitor. Examples are ramaprol, perindopril, enalapril. And those drugs actually do cause, in roughly about 10% of patients, a very dry, mm. irritating cough, uh, which can be quite persistent and it can be a troublesome cough in some people. So just be aware that can actually happen. Mm. And actually, if you do find yourself getting that side effect, changing you to an alternative 
uh, can help to get rid of that actually. There's a lot of patients who would transfer to a drug like the sartans, candesartin, uh, mm. will reduce the incidence of the side effect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The, the other drug we've come across quite a lot and we spoke about is diuretics. And diuretics, we're talking here about bendroflumathiazide, uh, ferrosamide, these, indapamide. Indapamide, these uh, drugs which are there to try and help remove volume of fluid. Obviously, you basically pee out fluid and thereby reduce uh, the blood pressure that way. But they can cause a few problems. And I'm sure you see this in the elderly population where you're peeing out too much salt. That's right. The salt levels yeah. fall. And of course, that causes confusion. So I have had many admissions to hospital when the water medicines are started. Two weeks later, the salt levels are too low. Yeah. People get confused, start falling yeah. and hospital admission. So be aware of the side effects. I don't tell, I don't mean to you to read the whole side effect profile. I think if you actually read through the whole list of medicines, give up on all your yeah, medicines. You, you certainly would. But be aware of those common ones and mm. ask the question to your doctor, pharmacist, or nurse who's prescribing these medicines. That you know, what are the most common side effects? How do I know whether the side effect is going to be a temporary one or is going to get worse with every single uh, increment of medication? Another important uh, piece of information I wanted to give uh, to you today is knowing that the office blood pressures are higher than your home measurements. I'm sure you have heard of white coat uh, hypertension, which means that your blood pressure goes really high when it is checked by a doctor or nurse, you are in hospital or in doctor's office, white coat hypertension. And there are various ways to check this out for you. For example, we do ambulatory blood pressure measurements. However, even if you do not suffer from white coat effect, and you do not feel anxious in doctor's office, the clinical trials have shown that without you even noticing, the, the office blood pressure does mm -hmm. go up without you even realizing it. So my third top tip today is automatically minus 10 <laughs> from the blood pressure figure you are getting in the doctor's office. So tip number four, and this is actually a tip which is really close to my heart here, is about taking your medicines, adherence to not only medicines actually, but adherence to lifestyle um, processes in terms of making sure that you comply with the instructions given to you by, by your physician. What do I mean by this? Well, first of which, if we think about just adherence to medicines, making sure you have a schedule you know when to take your medicines, and in terms of some of the side effects, splitting your blood pressure tablets could in fact reduce the lightheadedness and dizziness you may experience. And I know, Eleanor, you've done that quite a lot in the elderly population by putting some tablets in the evening time. For example, if you are on a blood pressure medication called bisoprolol, it can be perfectly well prescribed once a day, yeah. But if you are experiencing dizzy spells, your blood pressure goes down too much in the morning, uh, you can split the dose into two. Yeah, and uh, there's many other things you can do to remember how to take medicines. Actually have a uh, reminder. I mean, one of the things we, one of my patients had was actually uh, he used to take his medicines every single morning around about breakfast time actually having a piece of paper in the inside of his cupboard where his cereals were meant that every time he opened the door to get his mm. cereal there was a reminder take your medicines and it's important that you do continue to take medicines because for blood pressure it's one of these i always call it a silent killer in mm. fact actually a lot of healthcare professionals are aware of this you don't feel like you've got blood pressure you don't have any any effects usually at the beginning. So some Unless patients, it is really, really yeah. high when you get headaches, blurred vision, nausea, vomiting. Otherwise, it is asymptomatic. You Completely. don't know you have it until you have the stroke or heart attack. Yeah, I would say about 75% of patients who have blood pressure do require at least two blood pressure tablets mm. to control their blood pressure. So that kind of gives you an idea that if you uh, are only on one tablet, uh, when was the last time you were actually monitored? Mm. Do you know whether your blood pressure is actually reaching target? And with, with the same tip, it's all about, again, lifestyle changes, making sure that you continue to uh, reduce the salt intake in your diet, because actually taking salt in your diet mm. can dramatically uh, affect the, well, the effect of your, uh, your medication, especially drugs like Ramipril. Finally, tip number five, over-treatment. 
I'm a geriatrician and this really close to me. What we need to understand is you had your blood pressure treated in your 50s, 60s, 70s. You might be on two, three, some of you on four blood pressure medications. However, various changes happen in the body. And as you enter into your 70s, 80s and 90s, some of the changes of your body bring the blood pressure down naturally. So you might no longer need those four blood pressure medications. But unless you have regular reviews of these medications but by your primary care physician, you will end up with over-treated blood pressure, which will cause dizzy spells, poor balance, falls, and fractures. And having a fracture in your late 80s and 90s, fracture in your hip, when you are a much older, maybe frailer adult, could be beginning of the end. And that's what my tip number five is. Please review your medications every six months because some of those medications as the time goes by you might not need anymore and you stop yourself fracturing that hip of yours and stop dying prematurely and there's actually a bonus number six tip believe it or not and bonus number six is all about monitoring and it comes on the back of tip number five in making sure you keep an eye on your medicines but it's so so important you get your bloods tested on a regular basis especially when we're starting to increase the doses of some of these medicines they can cause kidney dysfunction and also the fact of sick day rules mm. i mean we've talked about these in other posts whereby if you are unwell if you're having diarrhea vomiting and you're not able to actually consume fluids some of these tablets can be quite dangerous to you so be aware of what medicines you you need to hold stop while you're actually having an acute illness you are so generous today, Michael. So <laughs> generous. Let me give you a hug from all our listeners. Thank you for your tip number six. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much for listening. Stay tuned. Do some jokey stuff. <laughs> hey, Michael. Handsome. Handsome. Where is your... Where are your locks? <laughs> I am missing your locks. <laughs> Oh, uh, this is COVID. Your know, first haircut post COVID. And uh, my goodness. It's not post yet. No, oh, okay. Michael, I'm missing your long hair. <laughs> I wanted to plot them. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, this is uh, the uh, first haircut I've had in about four months. I since think. we since we uh, just judging coming... judging by the length of your hair, it probably more was like <laughs> four years. <laughs> yeah.